guys, what's up? It's me, MJ Fangirl, and in today's video, we're gonna be chilling. Yes, a lot of people have been asking me to do reactions to just audio, interviews, songs, things like that. So I wanted to just kind of start off with something new, like late night hangout with MJ Fangirl. We're just gonna vibe to whatever it is. Today, we're actually reacting to an interview. And I'm gonna explain to you guys why this interview actually means so much to me. This is one of the interviews that um, really touched my heart and something that I really, really cherish. So I'm gonna listen to the audio with you guys, share a little bit about my story in um, regards to the audio and like how um, I personally relate to it and why I love it so much. So stay tuned if you wanna just chill out, lay back, get you some popcorn, put your headphones in, and we're just gonna vibe. Stay tuned, you're now watching MJ Fangirl TV. All right, you guys, so if you're new to the channel, my name is MJ Fangirl. I make videos for and about the Michael Jackson fan community. And today we're actually going to be listening to an interview with Michael Jackson and Steve Harvey. If you did not know who Steve Harvey is, um, if you're outside of the USA or you just really don't know, Steve Harvey is a multimedia, per multimedia personality. He was a comedian, he had a TV show, he's written books. He's had multiple TV shows, actually, a sitcom, uh, a talk show, host the family feud. Like, he just is like a do it all kind of person. And he also has a radio show. I'm not sure if he still has it, but um, on his radio show, he interviewed Michael Jackson. And this is way back in the 2000s, around the time that Invincible came out. And this was an interview that I cherished so much. I loved it. I didn't get to listen to it live. It was something that I found online and I just, um, it was just something that meant a lot to me. If you guys have been watching my channel for any amount of time, you guys know that I studied abroad in Japan when I was younger, um, twice in high school and in my junior year of college, I spent it in Tokyo, and I was only able to take certain things with me that would remind me of home. Um, at that time, I don't even think I had DVD, like I couldn't bring DVDs, CDs, like I really just brought the bare minimum. So I had um, my little MP3 player. I used to have a Zune, I think it was called, not even an iPod, because I was one of those people that always tried to be different, you know? When everybody had the iPhone, I wanted the Blackberry. When everybody got the iPod, I was like, I'm gonna get this off-brand thing. And I loved it for the time that it worked, but um, I downloaded this interview because it reminded me of home. And this interview is just such a celebration of Michael Jackson as a human being and as a legacy artist. And um, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's vibe, let's chill out. And um, yeah, can't wait to listen with you guys. All right, you guys, I got my spin drift. I'm ready to vibe out. This is the single best call ever on this radio station. Is this one is bigger than President Clinton called. I know this. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone, uh -huh. put your hands together and show your love for the king of pop, Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> They're all excited. You don't feel me? Watch what I say. Hey, Mike. How you doing, player? Wow. How are you? What's up, brother? How you feel, man? I went to bed early so I can wake up <laughs> and speak to you. I'm a, I'm a very, really big fan of yours. Hey, man. I um, as I told you, I um, I saw your show. Uh, the kings of comedy. Right, right. And you did a skit about the Titanic, and I thought that was one of the funniest things <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Incredible. Uh, Michael and I met. Uh, in this, my trailer. Yeah, this year. He invited me. On Rock My World. Right, to Rock My World. And I, I didn't come on the air and tell anybody because I considered that, you know, just a private thing between us. You know, I didn't go out and go, man, how's the Michael Jackson trailer? You know, the brother invited me to his trailer. I met his kids. Great kids, man. Michael, Thank you. great kids, man. Thank you very much. Can, can I pay you this compliment? Your kids didn't act like little rich kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, they had manners. They were real nice, man. I was playing ball with the little boy. He didn't want to stop. He just kept throwing me the ball. <laughs> I just got into it. I said, all right, little pressure, here you go. I'm going to throw you a hot one. Catch it. <laughs> Mike. Hey, man, I cannot tell you, man, how big this is for us here to beat, man. Oh, well, God bless you. You're just a great talent. You're really incredible and very funny, guys. Yeah, I do. Seriously, you got me screaming when I watch 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I watched Mother Cutting. <laughs> <laughs> this, this dude was funny, man. We used to have a good time in this trailer, man. Just, just one of the really, really nice people, man. Really, really nice people in this business, man. Uh, and I, I got something else for you, too, Mike. I talked to your uh, personal assistant. I got a new DVD out. I'm sending you that. You'll have that today. Oh, cool. Play on, play on. You, me and you, Mike. <laughs> Mike Jackson on the phone. I don't even know what to ask. Hey, Mike, I got one for you. Hey, let me ask you this question. When you were performing at, on, on, on the uh, 30th anniversary special, did you have an emotional moment when you and your brothers was on stage? Because it was this moment on, during the performance where you kneeled down and you stayed there. And your brothers were looking at you like, okay, Mike, come on. When, was it? It's always real, and I take that moment and I, uh, I try not to cry, and I usually do, you know, uh, because everything goes back to me from, you know, conception, you know, just when we were little babies and children, and now to see, you know, all of these, uh, uh, you know, all the adulation and notoriety, and it just, it's just a work from God, and it all goes through me real fast, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. it's a blessing. And I just, I, I just break down and I cry at that moment. I try not to show it to the audience, but I can't help it, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I saw it, man. I thought that was real, you know? Uh, I think, man, that, that people, when they see these things in you, brother, I think that that allows them to see a glimpse of the real Michael Jackson that oftentimes only your closest friends get to see. Yeah. You know? And I thought that was a great moment, man. I enjoyed it. That was my favorite part of the show. I said, if I ever talk to this bro, I'm going to ask you about it. Yeah. That was hot, man. That was real hot. Hey, man, it, it's, it's so much, man, uh, that, that we could talk about, you know, um, your career and everything. Your sister called the radio station. Oh, yeah? Janet called. About, uh, how long ago did Janet call? First of all, Jeff, first of all, Michael, let me introduce you to my uh, co-host on the show, Shirley Strawberry and Dominique DeFrey, because they are busting to say hi. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Hi, Michael. How are you? Great. I'm such a big fan. Huge fan. Oh, thank you so much. And oh. I love your album. I really, oh, thank really you very much. Your album. Oh. Yeah. The new album, Mike. Yeah, we really love it. Seriously. Thank you so much. I keep playing Break and Die. Oh, no. I know. Oh, great. Thank you. Hey, Mike, right. <laughs> listen to this. We had the OJs on the show Monday, and we were talking about your album. Uh -huh. And the OJs, this is Eddie LaVert's take on your album. He said, Mike threw Rock My World out there, Adam. Then just said, hold up. <laughs> Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Then you drop butterflies. Uh, uh, yeah. Butterflies, man. I'm telling you, on this station right here, I play butterflies at least twice a morning. Yeah. And in four hours, they ain't right on the radio. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, Mike, where did you get butterflies from? Well, butterflies is, uh, with these two girls uh, named Floor Tree. And they came with a song, and uh, we kind of worked together. Uh, it's mainly the other two girls who mainly uh, composed that one. Wow. And um, they're, I think they're British. They're British girls. They're black British girls. And they were just phenomenal. And uh, I thought it was just you know, something that I really, really liked. So uh, we did some kind of counter, you know, hooks and lines and painted it with different sounds and everything, different colors. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we produced it and I produced it and just created something that was just acceptable. And, uh, and it, it, ended up, it ended up going on the album. So I'll do it at least over 100 songs until I come up with about 20 or 30 that I like. Wow. And I'll cipher it down, cipher it down, you know. Wow. A hundred songs, dog, before you come up with 20 or 30, you like <laughs> Wow. Well, it's Michael Jackson. You know, man, the kid's yeah, he's a lot. He's working day and night. He's doing this for you. Yeah. Hey, man, Mike, I know you ain't this type of bro, but I am, so I'm just going to put it out there real like this. Ever since you came back, I told Usher and Cisco to put their shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> Take that shirt back on. Mike, take that back. You know, you take that glove. <laughs> <laughs> the extreme is back. 
Oh, you guys, I like, I want to like cry right now. I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Oh, such great memories. Your true friends, Michael, are still out there in the streets, man. And I can't even tell you, uh, I speak at uh, prisons across the country oftentimes. And I was at a Pritchett detention center out here. And one of the brothers uh, that was locked away, he said, Steve, the love you be giving Michael Jackson on the app, he said, if you ever, ever talk to him, tell him that we up in here, man, we've been feeling his music for a long time. Wow. wow. Yeah, man, that's a, that's a great compliment, man, to what you've been to people, Mike, for all these years, man. I mean, brother, I don't know if anybody's ever said thank you to you for the way you put it down, for all of the music you gave us that's still in our hearts, man. And I, I don't know if nobody ever said thank you to you, man. Right? Thank you, God bless you. That's so beautiful. It's, um, I appreciate it. It's, it's not easy being in my position because we create so much sensationalism and tabloid. People lie. On, we create rumors and stories yeah. and, and none of it's true. You know, it's, you it's very, very difficult, you know. It's yeah. not easy. It's very hard. And, you, you end up you hurt sometimes, you know, and you, you try to be as resilient as possible. Right. But it's very, very difficult because there's tabloids who lie, they, just, they hate that they're jealous. Yeah, it's a good you know, it's just, So when you read them, so notice it's a lie, don't yeah. believe it, burn it. We should have a tabloid burn. <laughs> Jackson off the air. Oh man, your mother is, and I gave her her props too. I told Miss Jackson, I said, a phenomenal job you've done in raising as many talented children that you have and still maintain them as a family. And she was uh, thanking me because I had uh, came forward on your behalf on more than one occasion uh, concerning several issues, man, that were just totally false about you. And I promised yeah. everybody to go out and get a copy of the GQ article. Uh, in, from 1994, and uh, GQ uh, had a lot of back issues we ordered because of this, mm. and um, a lot of people read the article and found out the real truth behind a lot of things that were so false, man, and, um, and your mom was thanking me for saying that on the radio, man, and I, and I just wanted to say, man, that there are, there are a lot of people out here, man, that really feel you, player, that really yeah. wish that they could just feel you some more and a phone call like this Mike I yeah. gotta tell you player Aww. you go a long way man oh, thank you so much oh. I, I, I don't do it um, often at all I never do it I never do it yeah, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the first yeah. <laughs> the first yeah. thank you wow, wow. You, I'm, I'm happy to do it for you and from the bottom of my heart you are so kind and wonderful to me somebody People used to tell me different places, there's this guy who talks about you every day. <laughs> and and he, uh, I go, who is it? And his name is Steve. I go, Steve. And then I saw the King's Comedy Show. I said, this is the guy? <laughs> he said, oh my God. I said, I'm a fan of him now. <laughs> It was, and you gave me a call, and it was, it was real crazy, because, like, going to see Mike ain't no, you don't just walk up and go, hey, Mike, I'm here. No. no, no, you got to go through some channels. It was great, man, uh, you have me here. Hey, Mike, listen, man, um, what, can, can you tell us exactly what is Never Never Land? Can you clear that up for the listeners? Never Land. Never Land? Yeah. Sure, right there, I thought it was Never Never Land. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, well, that's okay, too, if you want to call it Never Never Land. It's a, um, it's just a serene and tranquil place to just relax and enjoy yourself and leave your troubled mind and the things that, you know, irritate you in your heart and in your soul behind. And once you enter the gates, it's just in a very wonderful, quiet, loving place. And where there's lakes and, uh, you know, rolling hills and grass and trees and, you know, rides and trains and... 
3,000 acres. <gasps> wow. 3,000? Three thousand acres. Yeah. <laughs> I got seventy acres in Texas. I thought I was king. <laughs> I got seventy acres. Oh, you got three thousand. <gasps> well, I get to compensate for the loss of you know my childhood that I never got to enjoy. Uh -huh. Child life things, but it's it's just it's for everybody. It's, it's, we have handicapped kids with cancer, terminally ill children, leukemia kids, Make a Wish Foundation, Dream Street. We've been doing this for like over nine, ten. Uh, 11 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I did it before at my mother's house in Encino. We never wave a flag. We never try to get press for it. I do it quietly. You right, know? absolutely. We, we've helped. We, by the bus loads, they come. And we don't have yeah. cameras or videos, but I do it quietly. This real charity is from the heart, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to say, look at me, look what I'm doing, but I do it quietly from the heart. Oh, yeah, and, that's And right. uh, I've done this for years, many, many years. And, uh, one day, maybe you can meet me there. We can say hello. You know what? That would be great. Mike, I got to, you know, uh, for everybody just tuning in, we, we're interviewing live on the radio, Michael Jackson. I mean, this is, this is like the bomb. This is the bomb interview. This, this tops it for me. You know, Mike, I've had President Clinton call me from Air Force One before, and uh, it did not have this impact. Wow. Because, you know, Clinton cool and everything. I really like him. Yeah, he ain't Michael, though. <laughs> he ain't got a, he ain't one bit of genius and be in ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about it. I'll be there. Come on, everybody. 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 children in it, where they had 38 children, 23 books, so no, 23 desks and 8 books, with 38 kids, 23 desks and 8 books, Wow! and it broke my heart, man, so I took some news cameras down there, so instead of having me come to Neverland, because I know, you know what I mean, it would be great for me, but if my foundation got together a bus, wow. a really, really, uh, inner city kids, man, that were real young and had never been out of their neighborhood and never saw anything great. If I could arrange it through your people, man, where well, I pay for the bus and everything, we could get a busload of kids, man. You got it. We'll do it. That's what we do. Aww. Aww. I would be more than pleased and happy to do that. Yeah. So, what we do? you know what, Mike, what I'll do is I'll put a little contest together on the radio and we'll research. We'll go to the, to the schools that have the least. And because these children, man, if they could get a chance to see something outside of their neighborhood. Some of these kids never been to the beach out here. Some of these kids never been to Beverly Hills out here. If we could get that man. looked out, man, in the, at the top of the year, uh, my foundation would happily pay for the buses and the lunches. But I know you take care of them out there. But yeah, of course. I think that would be great, man. Wow, I'd love to do that. Cool. That's, what oh, I'm doing. Aww. That's the bomb deal right there. Hey, Mike. Hey, man. If, if, if you could say, uh, oh, the new album is out. It's, it's called Invincible. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's really good. Oh, Thank you. That's Thank bad. And, and he didn't call in to promote the album. No, 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 no. Really, this ain't even what the couple is about. It's just player to player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 it's just <laughs> Team, we just want to know that we appreciate it, that's all. I mean, the good music keeps going. 
just a good idea you know, years and years ago. We just love it. Thank We're you. big fans of Michael. Big fans. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hey, man, that, that's the one thing, man, that I want to get across to people, that the brother on the phone has been a real brother the whole time. In regardless as to what you hear in the media, what you read about, the tabloids, that garbage, they print stuff about everybody false all the time. I mean, just, this cat right here is one of, the, one of the nicest people in this business and been that way a long time. And it's not harm to hair on anybody's head, but people have gone after him for, for monetary gains, just to get money. Yeah. If, you, if you read the GQ article, in 1994, get a copy of it, sit it off and read it with the cover with Michael Jackson on the cover. It will tell you this whole story and exactly what happened. And I mean, man, it was very revealing and I, I was stunned, but then not really, because I know how people are. Because I only get a taste of it and I ain't even, I ain't even Michael Jackson. Plus, like, I'm dangerous when you come at me, I, I cuss, spit, I do all kinds of things. Like so I got friends in no place. <laughs> And Mike, you really need a couple of those friends. Roll out there and handle some business. Like, they all real, Mike. You know, the tabloids just really on your nerves. You get the tabloid building burnt down. All in the cross, y'all. We give them fifteen hundred. We need to. We need to do it. Let's be real, Mike. Let's be real. We need to do it. I got some boys that can get over there, dog. I'm talking about from low places. <laughs> Then there are those who disguise themselves as legitimate and they're just as terrible, they're worse. Yeah. True. I've read a couple of them newspapers. Too. Yeah, they're worse. Yeah, I've been in that. Hey man, I think it's great for the masses to uh to hear you. Yeah. Hey, every now and then, Mike, just give me a call, play a call. Okay. My interview with you is always this way. The morning show is motivational and uplifting. We are not here to tear nobody down, what? to poke fun. I got a million jokes I can do about anything else, but I never get off into people's personal lives. But you, brother, you have meant a lot to people, man. Uh, thank you so much. And I want to say something to you special, too, man, because a lot of people don't get this from too. But I got to tell you something. You have meant something to black people, man. And don't ever think you don't and you haven't. Yeah. You have really, really meant something to a lot of minorities across this country. And you remember that about your music, man. You remember that about your videos. You touch us that way. And I'm giving you something, man, just from one brother to another that the mainstream America can't give to you. But it's what you have done in representing black people. I'm and proud of my heritage. Come on, let us say it. I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be black. I'm honored to be black. And uh, I just hope that one day that they will be fair in uh, portraying me the way I really, really am. Just a loving, peaceful guy wanting to make uh, wonderful, uh, unprecedented uh, entertainment and songs and music and film uh, for the world. Yeah. You know, that's all I want to do. I hope no threat. I just want to do that, you know? Say that. That's all I want to do. Make sure it to the world. You've been doing it, man. You've been doing it. You've been doing it for a long time. I'll say it in close. Cisco! Usher! Put the shirt on! Take it back! 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 Hey, brother, big love to you. Call us again. I love you all. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Y'all show me love Thank for the you. one and only King of Pop. I love you. Aww. You guys, I love that interview. Oh my gosh, I'm about to cry. Okay, you guys, so I'm back and wow. All I can say is wow. Like, that interview always makes me emotional. Um, first of all, thank you to Steve Harvey. Like, one of the things that I love about this interview is that he just straight up gave Michael his props. He made him laugh. They talked about things that were important to Michael. Like, I just love that we really got a chance to hear a little bit of Michael Jackson's personality and like hear him just be loose and free in expressing himself. I love the fact that Michael um, was thanked by Steve Harvey. Like what interviewer has ever thanked Michael Jackson for like the sacrifices and the entertainment that he's given. And I love the fact that Steve Harvey told Michael Jackson how much he's meant to black people. And I can attest to that as a black American, like growing up knowing that Michael Jackson, I mean, achieved the world from his humble beginnings. You know, he became one of the most 
known, well-respected, well-loved superstars of the last century, like of our time and the next generation to come. And it's just so, so, so beautiful to be a part of his fan community, but particularly as a black American, it does mean a lot to have someone that represents you. I know a lot of um, people probably feel me when I say that like, you know, especially like as a black American, as a minority, you know, sometimes when you're in spaces, you are looking for that someone that represents you and that is the good role model and that it, inspires you to to stand out or to achieve in the way that they did like no one had before and like so just the way michael jackson looked at james brown and sammy davis jr and jackie wilson michael jackson is that for so many artists yes but also for just for so many people like for me growing up knowing that michael jackson had achieved so much was a huge huge inspiration to me and like a driving force behind me like studying and trying to accomplish what I wanted in my career and just like wanting to explore the world. Like if you've seen my travel vlog to Brazil, you know that Michael Jackson is really the reason that I wanted to like explore the world. I could have really cared less about it. So just hearing Steve Harvey give him those props for the impact that he's made on people's lives, everybody's lives, okay, was just surreal and it was really, really emotional to listen to. Um, I also love this interview because they talked about Neverland and they talked about him being a dad and just like the regular stuff. They talked about how impactful the album was. Now, I wanted to really bring this interview to the forefront for you guys because look, like that, that Invincible album, as much as people wanna talk crap about it, like a lot of fans talk bad about Invincible, which I'm not happy about. Like, I don't like that. It's not my favorite album, no, but it was a great album and it did make an impact on the radio. People did listen to the album and especially on the R&B adult contemporary stations, like, people were playing the track. Like I used to listen to WBLS 107.5 in New York at nighttime, you know, they would play the but during the daytime evening, you rock my world of course, but then they get into the butterflies. They'd play heaven can wait. They'd play you are my life. They can't, they would play don't walk away on the radio. And a lot of people just act like as they would play cry. I forgot about that one. People act like invincible was just like this big flop when it totally, it totally wasn't. And when you're around during that time, you really, really appreciated it and you felt how important the album was. And so for me, like I really, love this interview and um, it means a lot to me. Every time I listen to it, I get emotional. I haven't listened to it in over a year, maybe, maybe a year or two. Um, but funny story, when I studied abroad in Japan, I brought this, as I told you guys earlier, and there was there were a couple nights where I was adjusting to being in a new country and eating different things. And I remember just a couple times, just like having to like, you know, feeling nauseous or just like totally like, anxious about whatever I was and I would listen to this and it would just calm me down, put me right to sleep and I'd wake up and um, I'd just feel, feel better about everything and taking on a new day. And so, yeah, just really super inspirational, you guys. I love this interview and I hope that you did too. Comment down below if this is the first time you that you heard the interview. Let me know what some of your thoughts are. Let me know if you have heard it before and why you love it, if you love it as much as I do. And also let me know if there's anything else you'd like for me to react to in Late Night Chillin' with MJ Fangirl. All right, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.